to our home territory today in rural Devon, where I live, with Roger Bush, who's a success successful businessman, but more importantly for these videos, successful owner and punter. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, um, Can you just uh, bust off in the beginning, please? How did you get into racing, etc.? Oh, it's a, a long story and a long time ago. Um, I went to Agricultural College in Newton Abbott um, a long time ago. Uh, started going to the races at Newton Abbott uh, when they ran a lot of evening races in those days and also got involved in going to point to points uh, that got my uh, taste buds going and at that time I was farming in Cornwall in fact I farmed in Cornwall for 30 years and uh, worked in the golf industry um, with the very famous Bond brothers at St Melian, Martin and Herman who sadly are no longer with us. But Herman in particular was very keen on racing and uh, he and his brother got some horses together. Uh, we went over to, to Ireland with uh, Jim Old, who past trainer, now with Nigel Twiston Davis, uh, and met up with um, Johnny Harrington, again, no longer with us, but uh, uh, Jesse's uh, husband, and we bought store horses and uh, or well, the brothers did, and brought them back, and I stuck them in a field on my farm, and uh, we went on from there. Uh, something I, I'd like to mention at this point, Simon, is point-to-pointing. I was secretary of uh, the local point-to-point -point for 10 years, uh, and point-to-pointing is a wonderful uh, racing sport. Uh, there are probably 200 fixtures up and down the country from December to June, uh, the last one in your part of the world here at, uh, at Umberley. And uh, I, I would recommend all race, racing enthusiasts to get themselves to a point to point because you really do get very close to the racing, uh, go down to the jumps and uh, watch these amateur riders uh, pinging these fences. Uh, some are very good, some are very ordinary, uh, but you really do get the, the feel of racing and uh, uh, it's well worth the trip. Uh, equally, when you go to the races, uh, national hunt racing I'm talking about, do get out in the country where you're allowed to and watch uh, horses uh, uh, jumping fences. Uh, I always try to get down to the second last at the Cheltenham Festival, uh, particularly in the Two Miler. And if you see these horses taking off in the wings, I can well remember uh, Moscow Flyer and Viking Flagship and horses like that. Um, uh, it's breathtaking. They take off back in Bishop's Cleve somewhere and... Uh, land down at Stroud it's it's spectacular and it's you have to get out there to get the feel and see what racing's all about so you must have met some characters along your way um on the race courses any particular ones that spring to mind yes i mean obviously you know the the west country uh bookmakers and uh, there were plenty of those um there was a guy i can remember who lived in western Supermare, and he was called uh, rhode island red uh, after the, the chicken because he walked like a chicken. And his job, he was employed by the main ring bookmakers in the West Country and he used to uh, slope off to the stables and on some race courses, uh, you must remember, the stables are quite away from the groundstand and the paddocks. And he would slope off there to get the word about the well-being of horses because horses, some horses don't travel very well. Uh, the lorry could have been involved in an accident. They don't drink when they get to the stables. They can have a touch of colic, all sorts of things. And uh, bookies, um, bookies don't want to know which horse is going to win because um, one's sure to win. Uh, but they do love to know which ones can't win. And uh, that used to happen years ago. And of course, the same thing happens today. And you see it on the exchanges. No need for Rhode Island Red because people have mobile phones. But uh, if you see a horse drifting in the last three quarters an hour before a race, it usually means that horse has not travelled well. Something has happened to it between leaving uh, its stable uh, and arriving at the race course. And uh, the person that really knows how well that horse is, is the travelling lad or lass that looks after it. And they can say to their boss or the, uh, the owners, look, uh, this horse just isn't right today. Don't know why, but uh, he isn't going to run to his best. Um, and that's where you get the drifting on the exchanges. Um, you've also been involved with uh, several fairly decent horses. Can you tell us something about them? 
Uh, yes. Um, again, going back to my, uh, my relationship with the Bond brothers, particularly Herman Bond, one of the horses we bought uh, was a horse called St. Melian Fairway. And uh, uh, I probably made more money um, from that horse um, on two occasions, both in the Grand National, and of course it didn't win either. Um, it came fourth in 1998 when Earth Summit won. And I backed it all winter. Every time I went past a bookie somewhere, in I went, £10 each way, 50 to 1, 60-60s. Uh, the rains came the week of uh, that Grand National meeting. It was a bog. He was back down to 20 to 1, and uh, we collected um, quite a lot of money uh, by backing him each way uh, four places. Uh, as I said, Earth Summit won that year. The following year, uh, we again went to the National, but it was uh, far too fast for him, the ground far too quick. And uh, I was going up and down the bookie stands about midday, and they were taking bets uh, on horses um, to get round, as they often do at the National, they usually do. And Fairway was there at six, seven to one to complete the course. And I said to uh, my colleagues, I said, oh, that is a bet we can't miss. Uh, Jimmy Frost was riding it, uh, Brownie's father, and uh, there are not many better horsemen uh, than Jimmy. Uh, and of course, he'd won, on, uh, he won the Grand National. Uh, and Jimmy just had to hunt this horse round and uh, bring it home, which he duly did. It finished eighth or ninth. And interestingly, it was a head behind Earth Summit, who won the year before. Uh, and it beat Sam Lee, who was just behind it, who was uh, third in 1998. So uh, probably two of my biggest wins were on a horse that never actually won. So you, you mentioned your, your big wins. Um, you are a successful punter. What is your strategy for picking winners? Oh, it, it, it's, it's changed over the years, Simon, with experience. Um, I've gone from, from one extreme to the other. Uh, I used to bet level stakes. I used to bet too much. Uh, I had no discipline. I had no patience. And I kept no records. But as I got older and hopefully wiser, uh, I soon learned that uh, the only way to make it pay was to be selective, uh, don't bet every day, and make sure you're betting uh, in the right races uh, on the right horses. Uh, I'm lucky I have loads of connections in the, in the West Country, so I do uh, know when uh, uh, a horse is um, not laid out for a race, but uh, he's well and uh, going to run well. Uh, and what I do, and have done for years now, uh, when you're looking to, to back a horse, remember it's recreation to start with. If you think you're going to get rich backing horses, then uh, think again. Yeah, there are a few successful punters out there that make a very, very good living. But basically, it's a recreational leisure hobby. And try and bet so that you minimise your losses and hopefully make a few bob. Uh, and what I do now, and have done for many years, uh, I select the races I bet in. I don't bet in uh, novice hurdles very often. I don't bet on the flat very much at all, uh, apart from in handicaps um, uh, over one mile, two and further than that. And I tend to bet 90% of the time national hunt racing. Flat racing, uh, bookmakers love 20 plus runner handicaps over five, six, seven furlongs. They'll sponsor them forever and more. We all love having a punt because the favourite's 10 to 1. And uh, we've all got the sob stories, you know, he was drawn the wrong side, the pace was on the wrong side. When he came for his run, the doors closed and uh, all the usual. Um, you don't have those problems in, uh, in national hunt racing. Uh, if you're left at the start a few lengths in national hunt racing, not an issue. Um, you can usually find a way through uh, the only risk you have in national hunt racing, of course, is something falls down in front of you and uh, brings you down, or indeed your your horse uh, falls or unseats. So I tend to concentrate on handicaps, national hunt, some handicaps on the flat, long distance. Uh, I will have a look at novice hurdles and other races if I think there's a false pr uh, price favourite. Uh, let's say serious odds on at two to one. And I can see a bit of value at six, seven, eight to one about something else, which looks a sound each way bet. And if the, uh, the odds on favourite uh, isn't on a going day, then you've got a decent chance of uh, picking up some money. 
I don't bet level stakes anymore. I stopped doing that years ago. Um, a very wise bookmaker who uh, you knew uh, once told me that uh, the bigger the price, the bigger the bet. And that was the best advice I was ever given without any shadow of doubt whatsoever. So I have a, a, a points range, basically uh, one point each way, two points win, two points each way, and a maximum bet of four points win. And I have possibly one, maybe two of those a month, depending on, on, on what's going on. And I only have a maximum bet when I know something about the horse. It's not just my intuition. I, I want to know that um, uh, it's going, uh, going to be doing its very best. Also over the years, I've learned how to follow stables and more importantly, owners that have a punt. Uh, and this is so vital to my, my strategy because some of the smaller, particular national hunt stables they can only survive by having a few bob on at the right time uh, in the right handicap, usually at a midweek meeting uh, uh, in a class five uh, handicap hurdle or something of that sort. And uh, it's the only way they, uh, they pay their way. And uh, they, won't have, they won't have five winners a year, but uh, when they do have a winner, they, um, they have their money down. So, uh, that, in a nutshell, is uh, the strategy that I've been using.